Hi, Pablo here again with the uh, C-Sharp homework assignment, chapter 5, assignment 31, displaying the decimal equivalent of a binary number. Alright, so uh, oh, this is from a book, C-Sharp 2012, How to Program. And what we are supposed to do in this assignment is to write an app that inputs an integer containing only zeros and ones would be the binary integer and we're supposed to convert it to decimal equivalent of that number now they provide some hints uh, in decimal number system the rightmost digit again the rightmost digit has a positional value of one the next digit to the left has a positional value of ten then hundred then thousand and so on Again, this is from the right to left. Now the decimal number 235, 234, again this is decimal number 234, can be interpreted as 4, which is again from the right, times 1, 3 times 10, 2 times 100. And in the binary system, the rightmost digit has a positional value of 1, the next digit has a positional value of 2, then 4, then 8. In other words, it's a multiples. 1 times 2, then 2 times, uh, I mean, start with 1, then 2, then 2 times 2 is 4, then 4 uh, times 2 is 8, and so forth. So here's an example. The decimal equivalent of binary 1101 is 1 times 1, 0 times 2, then plus 1, this 1, times 4, and finally, last 1, times 8. So it would be 1 plus 0 plus 4 plus 8, which together equals 13, which is the decimal x. In other words, 13 is the decimal equivalent of 1101 in binary. So, it's a little confusing, I think, but uh, I'm sure we can do it. Let's start with the... Uh, usual declaring variables and I'll declare number as a string which will be the number entered by the user that will be the the uh, now we have the integer decimal well, I'll assign it zero for the initialize to zero then we need the binary and that is an integer again because it's one one zero one one that those are integer numbers then we need uh, some kind of a uh, index that would that would uh, be used to go one digit at a time it would, uh, it would be the index of the position of each digit in the string so uh, it's gonna be integer index equals zero, initialize to zero, and uh, we need a multiplier. Remember, the multiplier is over here. Uh, it's two, four, eight, and so forth. So we need to capture that because we will need to uh, multiply those numbers with that multiplier, and it will be increasing, increased each time uh, we multiply it. So multiplier and I initialized it to 1 because that is the first one. It doesn't start from 0. The first one starts at 1. So you get, yeah, the, the rightmost digit is 1, then it's 2, then 4, then 8, and so forth. So these are all the uh, variables we need. Let's ask user for the input. Uh, please enter a number to convert to decimal. Please enter a binary number to convert to decimal. And we need to store this in our string variable number. It's already string, so we don't need to convert it to anything else. We can simply read it from the input. So now user supplied 
the binary number and now we have to convert it. Now, like I said, we need the index to go digit by digit. Again, if you look over here, we have binary 1101, but we start from the right, one digit at a time. First we do one times one, then we do zero times two, then we do one times four and so forth. So our index needs to be equal to the last digit on the right. If it was 1101, index would need to be 0, 1, 2, 3, because that's the index of the last digit in the string. So index equals, and we use the string method, <coughs> string method uh, that calculates the length of the string. And that will give us the, how many characters are in the string, which is basically, it would give you the position of the last, uh, last string. All right, so now we have the length. And we can do the loop. We have to loop through each of those characters or each of the digits. So while index is greater than zero, <clears throat> and the reason why we do it greater than zero, because we will go again from the right to left. We start from the highest and go back to uh, to the first. I mean, from the last digit, and we go back to the first digit. So while it equals, uh, is greater than zero, <coughs> our binary number added it, uh, to integer, whatever our user supply, that will be the, uh, we have to convert it because the, to integer because we are uh, capturing the input as a string. The user input is a string, so we need to do the substring. Get the last digit character, which is the index minus one. It's minus one because it's a zero based. And then we're capturing only one character at a time. So when we when we go into the loop. We're capturing one character at a time, starting from the So our binary, after the first iteration, will hold one. After the second iteration, it will hold one and zero, and so forth. So we will add it to our decimal. Our decimal uh, and a multiplier. Remember, our decimal number is a multipl multiplier of the digit by 1, then 0 times 2, then 1 times 4, and 1 times 8. So our multiplier <coughs> it was initialized as 1, which is the first uh, iteration. So after the first iteration, we are multiplying 1 times 1 and adding it to our decimal. That's what our decimal is going to be. Now we have to adjust our index for the next uh, iteration. Again, we go in from right to left, so we have to go uh, 1 less. And a multiplier needs to be adjusted. Uh, which will be times 2. So at the beginning, multiplier is 1. In the second iteration, it's going to be equal to 2 because 1 times 2 is 2. In the third iteration, it will be 4 because 2 times 4, I mean, 2 times 2 is 4. And then it's going to be, of course, 8 and so forth, and 16 and so forth. And this is really all there is to it. This is the code that will produce the decimal value of the binary number. All we have to do now is to just output the output the results. Console that the right line. Uh, decimal ec 
Equ how do you spell that? Equivalent, I guess, of whatever the user supplied is and whatever the result is. All right, uh, and the placeholders will the first placeholder will hold the number, and the second placeholder will uh, hold a decimal. And console that read line so we can uh, read the output. All right, this is all. This is really all. As the uh, as much as it may uh, look confusing on, uh, on the assignment, the solution is surprisingly uh, simple. Let's test it now. <clears throat> website here with the uh, decimal uh, and binaries. So let's test it. All right. How about number? I don't know. Twenty-nine. <clears throat> decimal number twenty-nine. So if the user inputs. 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, 0, 1. the output on our end should be 29. So it's 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, 0, 1. So let's see if that works. <coughs> loading, loading, building, building. All right. So 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, 0, 1. And are we going to get 29? Yes, we did. Well, we got a decimal point portion. Um, let me format the output a little better. We don't want any <clears throat> any decimal points. So let's try again. Zero, 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 one, 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 or oh, one. And the decimal equivalent of zero, 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 one, one, oh, one is 29. All right, let's try another one. Let's try the one that they gave us here, 1101, and it should be 13. <clears throat> so, uh, 1101, and the decimal equivalent is 13. So, it is working. Let's try one more, just to make sure. And we'll try 255, which is all ones. Let's do that. One 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 one. It's two fifty five. And which one is the first? Uh, all right, let's try zero zero and one. Just to make sure that the uh, <clears throat> upper and uh, lower boundaries uh, work. Four five six seven and one, and it is one. So it is working, like I said, it's uh, very simple. You have your input from the user, which will be the, the binary number. Now you need to get or convert it to decimal number. So in order for it to uh, happen, you need to store the string into a binary. Now you didn't have to do it this way, you could capture integer right away. I always prefer to work with strings because of the substring method. I, I like that. Uh, you can do one character at a time. So I decided to use a string and then convert it to an integer and hold it in there. You get the index, which is uh, just used uh, to hold the position of each digit <clears throat> of the user input, and the multiplier, which increases with uh, each uh, iteration Again, it starts with 1, then 2, then 4, then 8, then 16, and so forth. Uh, now you ask for the input, you store the input. Based on how long the number is, you store it, store it in the index, which is the length of the, of the string. That will give you the position of the, of the rightmost uh, character. And then you go to the loop. You start from the right, so it's uh, until index is greater than zero. And you start, you convert your binary. You, uh, like I said, you capture it as a string, but you convert one digit at a time with the substring method. 
index minus one is always the last uh, digit that you are processing in uh, uh, during the first iteration this will actually equal the length minus one and then it will be length minus two then length minus three and so forth and you're capturing one digit at a time that's why it's, that's what this one means and then you add that to the decimal number you add it by multiplying it the appropriate multiplier the multiplier is initialized to one after that it's uh, initialized to two after that multiplier holds two times two it's four and multiplier is four times two is eight and so forth so basically you add in each multiplication to the integer number and that will give you the decimal number of the uh, binary number so hope it helped you and um, play with it a little you can like i said you can try instead of using a string and substring you can <clears throat> do it straight with integers and use like a mod uh, and the reminders uh, to capture the numbers like i said i like this better it's it's quite straightforward to me anyway so till next time uh, take care